Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and whenever we think about streaming video production tools, we often think of Elgato products, but this one from Roland, I thought, is worth getting on your radar screen if you are a video production nerd like me. This is the Roland Web Presentation Dock, UVC02, and this is like a Swiss army knife for video production because it incorporates a lot of things in one box that is powered by the USB cable that it connects to your computer with. So you have an XLR microphone input over here. You've got a multi-channel audio mixer because there's ways to get other audio sources into this. You've got a soundboard built into it. You also have the ability to plug in video sources and use this as a capture device. And it's just something that I think replaces a lot of extra things that you have to pack along with you for a remote production and incorporates all of them into a single package. There are so many features on this, we're not gonna be able to cover all of them, but I think what you'll see in this video is that this is something that I think could be very helpful for those of you doing any kind of video production. Now, before we get into this, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little box is all about. Now, I bought this the other day at B&H on sale for $200, although it normally sells for $300. At the time I'm recording this video, the price is still 200 bucks over at B&H, and I'll put a link in the video description where you can find it. Now, the construction of this feels really solid. Like most Roland devices, it is all metal, as you can see here. I would probably find a carrying box for it just because these dials are exposed and might be a little more fragile than the rest of the construction here. But everything feels nice and solid. You've got these very firm buttons here that have a good amount of tactile feedback. These will also light up and you can actually change the color of the lights, which I'll show you when we get everything wired into my computer in a minute. Now, you've got your XLR microphone input here at the top. And one of the use cases that they demonstrate is one of those stick mics that plugs into the port directly. But this will work with just about any microphone that you wanna plug into it. It supports phantom power for mics that require that. And there's a switch here in the back to turn phantom power on and off. You'll need to check with your microphone specifications to see if your mic needs that. You do have to plug it into a USB port on your computer, of course, but all of the things that come out of this box come out of this port and the USB port will also power the device even with the phantom power on. You should though plug it into a USB 3 port for the best results. Your HDMI input is over here. This will support 1080p at up to 60 frames per second from the device supplying video. Just note though that if you have something that has HDCP copy protection built in, like a Blu-ray player for example, it likely will not work on here because it does not take away that copy protected image. But things like cameras and game consoles all should work when you plug it in over there. You have an auxiliary input here, so you could plug in a computer or a little iPod or something to play music. And as you'll see in a few minutes, it has a ducker built in, which will automatically bring the audio of the auxiliary input down when you start speaking into the main microphone. So that's something we'll check out in a minute. You also have a monitor out here, so you could plug it into a speaker if you're over in a production room, but you also have the option to plug in headphones. And as you can see, this headphone jack also supports headsets with a microphone, so you can add that as a mic to the production as well, and you can mix it all here, and I'll give you the overhead view, uh, with the dials here on the front. Now, you don't get any level meters on the device itself, but the software that you'll see in a minute does provide that for you, and all of the audio coming in can be adjusted independently, and then it will mix it together and fire it off to the computer that you have it plugged into. Now you can bring in audio over HDMI and adjust the volume here. You also have that auxiliary input here. This is for the main microphone right there. And then you also have the headset mic, uh, which we talked about a second ago right there. Now on the front here, you've got a lot of buttons that do various things. So you have a button here that can mute the microphone. So if you wanted to play some music or something before you got started, you could have the music going out and then when you're ready to talk, push the mic button to activate the XLR mic here. You can also turn your video on and off just by pushing the video button here. 
This will not disconnect the USB, so if you're in Zoom, it'll just provide a black image to Zoom, but it'll very quickly come back on when you push the button, and we'll demo that in a minute as well. And then, of course, you have your audio out button, so if you wanted to kill all the audio, you could push that. Right here are two multifunction buttons. So what you can do with these is enable different types of audio effects that you program into each button. But this also can work as a little sound effects board. So you can load in a five second max 48 kilohertz WAV file. And when you push the button, you can play a sound effect. So that might be useful for podcasters that often play a sound effect when something happens within the show or whatever. You can program two of those in there. And then these can also work as buttons to advance your PowerPoint presentations. So a lot that you can do there. The effect button here will turn on and off some of the microphone effect settings that you can set in the software. And the setup button here will pop the setup screen on the computer that it's plugged into for you if you want to make adjustments on the fly. And then of course you can adjust the volume of the headphones and the monitor out here as well. So lots to talk about here. Let's get this thing plugged in and see how it all comes together. All right, so now we've got everything plugged in and you can see I've got three sources of audio. My camcorder here, which is bringing in video and audio through the HDMI input. I have an auxiliary cable going into my Mac, which has got a looping set of audio playing back right now. And then of course we have the XLR mic input. And although you don't get readings here on the audio levels, you will see a blinking light that'll correspond with what the mics are picking up. And because the aux here is playing music, you'll see that light is holding steady right now. Now, when you connect the USB cable to your computer, the Roland box here is going to show up as three different devices. And to illustrate this, I thought I would pull up the zoom configuration screen here so you can see how all this comes together. So as you can see here on the video settings, the Roland UVC-02 is showing up as a camera. And the reason why it shows up as a camera is because this presents itself as a standard webcam. So in almost every case, you're not going to need to install any drivers first to get this to work. Any device that supports webcams will see the video coming out of this and think it's a webcam. So that's why Zoom is able to work with this so easily. I did though have to make two adjustments to the video settings. One was turning on original ratio for the video so it doesn't get squished. And I also enabled HD and I turned off mirror my video and that gave me the best output here. Now another thing you need to adjust of course are the audio settings in Zoom. And again, this will apply to any other application that you decide to use. And as you can see here, my speaker is showing audio out Roland UVC-02. And that's because the Roland device shows up as a standard USB audio device. So audio can come out of the computer and through the UVC here. So for example, if I had headphones plugged into this, I could hear what people on the Zoom call were saying to me. I don't have to plug in anything else into the computer beyond just the USB cable. I can route everything else through this if I want. So that is why we've got that uh, speaker setting set to that at the moment, but of course you could have it output to anything else that you'd prefer. And then for the microphone, I have it showing up here as an audio input through the Roland UVC-02, and that will take the mix of all the audio sources coming into this and present it as a single audio source back to the computer. And again, no drivers are necessary here because this is all standard USB audio devices. So all the adjustments you're gonna make will be on the device itself. So if I wanted to turn down my music, for example, I could adjust the aux uh, volume control here for that. So it's pretty simple from a configuration standpoint because this is all just standard USB hardware here that the PC or Mac or Linux machine would recognize. There is, though, a setup application that we're going to take a look at now, and that only runs, though, on Windows and Mac. However, all of the settings that you apply from that application will save inside of the hardware, so when you plug it into something else, it doesn't need to have that software running. All right, so we've got the software loaded up now, and as you can see, it's showing us some audio levels from all the different audio inputs that we have on the device here. And of course, I can turn these down and adjust them just by turning the knobs, but it's nice to be able to see what each channel is picking up as you're getting things set up. Additionally, I can hide the software panel here just by pushing this button. 
So if you wanted to get back and forth quickly without interrupting your production software, you can just push this button, get it up, make your adjustment, and then put it back away so it doesn't get you off track from whatever you're doing on your production side. Now, as you can see here in the system panel, we have a few options to play around with. I can change the color of the buttons here. So for example, I could change the audio out button to purple, and I could make this one green, for example. Uh, these lights, though, are only on or off. So when they're illuminated, they are active. So when I turn the button off here, that will disable the microphone from going out over the USB. So you don't have a two-stage color here. It's either on or off. I'm just going to put these back to where they were before there. Uh, you can also update your firmware through this, and you'll get notified of that. Now these two buttons here, A1 and A2, are a lot of fun because they can be configured to do different things. So if we go back to the software here, you can see right now I have A1 and A2 set to their SFX settings. And what you can do here is upload a WAV file, a 48 kilohertz WAV file. And every time I push the button, it'll play a little sound. So if you're doing a show where you've got sound effects that you want to fire off every once in a while, you can have these buttons do that. And those audio files actually live inside of the Roland device. They get uploaded to it. It's a maximum of five seconds each, but if you have a couple of sound effects that you want to play on a regular basis, it will do that for you. But this button does some other stuff too. Let's have a look at that. All right, so now you're going to hear me through the microphone that I have connected to the Roland over the XLR cable here, the Shure mic. And what I'm going to do is go over to this voice changing function. And as you can see right now, it is set to girl. And if I push the button here, suddenly I sound a lot different. And then I can go over here and change it to something different. Maybe we can change it over here to gentlemen, or maybe we want to sound like a robot, or maybe we just want to turn it off. And you can do go in there very quickly and make those changes. This is kind of more of a gee whiz feature, but it's kind of fun and shows you some of the digital effects that this has on board. Additionally, on the second button here, I can also enable a, refer a reverb, so if I hit the button here, you can hear me now echoing a little bit, which I wasn't before. So there are some fun things that you can do here with those two buttons if you want to make some adjustments. Additionally, they can be set to advance or go back on a slideshow. So what I could do here is set uh, this button for the next slide and the left button to the previous slide, and I can control my slideshow uh, from this in addition to all of my audio controls. Now a few other settings worth looking at on here include how you can configure the button here to work in the middle. So by default it is a toggle on and off between talk and mute, but you could also have it be a push to talk button or a push to mute button. You can kind of have a cough filter on there. Uh, if your mic is coming in a little too hot, you can reduce the uh, incoming signal by 20 dB if you want. Over here on audio routing you can configure which Portions of the audio are active based on three different templates. So for example, if you never use the HDMI audio input, you can just disable it outright here so it doesn't automatically or accidentally uh, come up in the course of a meeting and you can have three different settings based on what you want to have set up. And it kind of works like a bus might on an audio mixer. So you could do some crazy stuff with the audio output here if you wanted to have some things go out over the USB and some go out only over the output. Lots of options there. Now there's another button on here called Effect and there is a lot that you can adjust on here. Uh, like we saw with the audio routing, you've got three templates that you can set. And in here, you've got a lot of controls, including an EQ, you've got compressor settings, you have a de -esser, and this is just for the main mic. You also have a set of controls for the headphone mic as well that you can adjust independently, because it is a separate mic. And then if you go over here to others, you have how the other audio inputs are managed, and you can see what those options are here. Now, one of the more useful features in this section is the ducking feature, and what this will do is bring down the level of all of the other audio sources when the microphone picks up audio. So to turn it on, what we have to do is hit the effect button here, and I'm gonna next turn up some music that is playing from my Mac. It's gonna be a little loud, and then I'll start talking and you'll see that automatically go down. So let's turn this up. 
and now if I start talking, you can hear that music goes back under. I don't have to touch anything. It does it automatically. And then when I stop talking... Now, all of the features that you just saw in the effects section here do require this button to be on for them to work. I was really struggling getting that ducker to work until I enabled that. I also found that the default settings aren't very good depending on the microphone you're using. So if you do intend to use some of the audio adjustments that can be made, I think you're gonna be spending some time getting things adjusted just right for your microphone. But remember, every setting you make gets stored inside of the Roland device here, so it is portable once you get everything configured. Now, there's also a couple of quality of life features on here that shows they really put a lot of thought into the design of this product, especially for the kinds of things that creators often run into. One of them is an audio delay feature. So sometimes you'll have a fancy camera that does all this onboard processing, and the result is that the video output comes in behind the audio and that the audio gets to the box faster than the video does. So what you can do is actually delay the audio output so that the video and audio are in sync going back to the computer. And what's cool about this is that not only can you adjust a level of delay for the USB, you can also set a separate independent delay for the monitor or headphone output over here. So if you were bringing audio to two different places, you can have it synced up perfectly to both of them. I thought that was a pretty neat feature here. Another thing you've got, if your computer is a little sluggish, is you can turn off its default lossless video output quality and instead have it do a motion JPEG compressed version that will eat up a little less USB bandwidth, but also might be more palatable to the computer you're plugging it into. I haven't found many PCs recently that struggle with lossless video, but it's nice to know you have the option here, especially if you're plugging into something that doesn't quite have the horsepower to handle the video output. So overall, I am very pleased with this little box. I've got it plugged into my vMix production system here. I've been testing it now for a couple of days. And even after running for several hours, I'm not seeing any drop frames. The audio and video are rock solid on it. And it's got a lot of functionality for a little box here, especially all the audio options you have and the fact that it only requires a single cable going in. So this is, I think, a very useful Swiss Army knife, if you will, for people that do a lot of live video production, especially those that are traveling to do that production. And I think it's something that is going to be another useful part of my production bag. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.